In this video, we'll be learning about routing in Laravel. So these are the few things that we'll be going through today. So we'll be using the Laravel documentation here. I'll give the link for this on the description. So you can refer this and follow along. Okay, and we'll be also continuing from the previous video. If you haven't watched the previous video, you can watch it. I will give the link on the description. It is about installing and set up Laravel. So we have walked you through setting up Laravel properly on your system. So if you want to see that video, go to the channel and you can watch it. So after setting up Laravel, you can follow along here. So first of all, we can open our project. So here you can see that I have opened a new Laravel project. This is a completely new Laravel project. We have simply created one on the previous video. If you haven't watched the video, watch it first and then follow along. So here we can see we are having a folder route. So today we'll be seeing about this. Okay. So mainly we'll be concentrating on api.php and web.php. We can open the web.php file. And here we can see that we are having one route and it is a get route to the URL that is slash. Okay. And we are passing a view that is welcome. And if you want to see what this welcome is, you can go to resources and inside the view, you can see we are having one file that is welcome.blade.php. Later on in the video, I will explain you in detail about the views. So right now we will be covering routes. So here we are returning a view as the response for this route. So you can see that here. If we try to run this, we can see that this file will be loading. Okay. So let's see that. So in order to run, you can open the terminal. So I'm using PHP Storm. You can follow along on VS Code or any IDE of your choice. I'm simply using PHP Storm because it is more convenient for me. So here we can run the application. To run it, you can type PHP artisan serve. Okay. So you have to make sure that this artisan file is inside this folder that you are currently in. Okay. Inside the terminal. So you can, I will show you the file. So on the root directory, you can scroll down and you can see this file. See artisan. So we are actually calling that. And now you can hit enter here. So here we can see that I'm getting an error. So this should not happen for you. So this is basically because the PHP version was outdated on this device, which I'm using currently. Uh, I recently updated it. So it is not reflecting on the command prompt. So we can open git bash. So if you don't know what is git bash, you can simply Google it and you can install git bash. Okay. Now we are inside git bash. Now we can run the same command that is php artisan serve. Okay. Okay. Now you can see that it is working properly and the application is running on this port and IP address. Okay. So you don't have to worry. You can continue on the terminal itself. Uh, you sim I simply have to restart this device and this problem will be solved. So in order to prevent interruption of the video recording process, I am continuing on Git bash. Okay. So don't worry about that. So let's open this URL. So you can see we are having this application running. So this is a default template uh, set by Laravel. So this is a view and uh, you can see, let's open the view file. Okay. Let's minimize this. And here you can see that inside the route, we are passing a view. Okay. And it is welcome. And if you go to view, you can see welcome.blade.php. You don't have to specify this blade.php every time because all the files inside view will be having this extension. You have to put this extension and Laravel will automatically detect it. Okay. So now we can minimize it and go to the documentation. Okay. Let's open the documentation. Here you can see that they are adding a new route and uh, we can see it is a get request. Okay. So we can add, there are a few methods that we can add. So if you scroll down, you can see here available route methods. Okay. And you can see get post put patch delete and options. Okay. 
and we'll be mainly focusing on get and post right now later on on this course we'll be going through all these so on the beginning we'll be concentrating on these two okay get and post request so let's create a new get request and see what happens so let's type route and you can specify the method that is get okay if you want to create a post request you have to give post and now you can specify the url okay and uh, that is slash so slash means it is the home page so let's say you are having a domain like codecc.com or google.com etc so this slash will take you directly to that google.com will directly take you to this view okay that domain home page okay you can say this as home page or welcome screen okay and if you want to add a new route you can specify something like let's say we are creating a login page okay so you can add slash login and now this is your domain slash that is example.com slash login okay hope you understand that and after that you can create a callback function here function and here we can pass anything okay so if you simply return a hi here now this is simply returning a string and if you try to load this url you can see hi so let's try that okay so here we can add slash login slash login and hit enter okay you can see hi here hope it is visible for you so that's it so it simply returns hi and it will display hi so we can actually create a login form and we'll be doing that on later on so right now you can see we are simply returning hi and it is visible here now instead of simply returning a hi you can also return a response let's say response and maybe you can say some content like if you want to pass a html you can do it like this okay h1 and let's say hi so hope you remember how the hi uh, looked uh, previously let's go to the page and see so here you can see this is how it looked previously i haven't refreshed this page so this is how it looked previously and now you can refresh this page and now you can see that it is showing in bold because it is in h1 tags okay so hope you understand that now let's go back to our ide now we can try passing the status also so if you want to see how this response function looks like you can click on control and use the mouse to click on this function so that's the shortcut inside php storm inside visual studio code it will be different but you can do that so let's go inside this function and you can see it is actually accepting the content and the status and also headers as an array okay so let's pass the status right now so let's give it a comma the second parameter was a status so maybe let's set it to four or four that means page not found and now we can try refreshing the page okay so here we can try refreshing this page before refreshing this page you have to go to the inspect element so simply click the inspect option on side chrome you have to use chrome and here we can go to the network tab. okay so here now if you try to refresh this page you can see the response and all those things so let's refresh this page okay now you can see the status is 404 see so before okay let's go back and change it to uh, remove the status and try it okay so we can either set the status to 200 or you can simply remove it because by default if you go to this function you can see by default the status is 200 okay so you can either set it to 200 or simply remove it okay now we can refresh the page once more see you can see the status is 200 so if you click this and this is a request okay and you can see that we are having many header parameters passed all these things okay so we'll be going to the headers so let's go back to our ide so now we can pass the headers 
cells give a comma and the second one was status and then we can pass the headers to set the headers we can pass it in a array and inside that we can uh, set content type and we can set the content type to right now it is uh, html by default you can see we are passing html so let's try setting it to json and you can see a difference there application slash json okay so let's hit enter here and you can see so we are passing the third parameter here and that is content type and that is we are setting it to json okay so now let's refresh the page so i'm not saving this file every time because i'm using php storm and it automatically saves the file so if you're using vs code you have to save the file okay or you can use any plugins that will automatically save the file okay so don't forget that and here we can refresh the page and you can see it changed see and you can see that here if you click on the response you can see we are passing content type and we are passing this value also so hope you understand and you can see that here also it is showing some icons that denotes json so hope you understand that so if you're having any json plugins uh, that will also dictate right now so so let's change that back to text so we can change it to plain text so we can set it text slash plain and we can try refreshing the page now if you refresh this page you can see right now we have set it to plain text that's why it is displaying the h1 tags and all so you can see it is text so hope you understand that so you can also instead of passing it as a array you can also use the shortcut functions i will show you so you can remove this array from here and you can come here after this response you can add a arrow and you can call header and here we can pass content type just like before you can pass content type here So instead of using that arrow, we can use a comma and then specify the content type. Let's set it to text slash plain. Okay, so let's hit and enter from here and hope it is visible for you. So that's it. Now you can also set the header like this also. So if you want to set some custom headers also, you can simply pass any custom header also. So let's say we are setting some value. And let's pass something like ABC and let's refresh the page. And if you refresh this page and you have to click this and here inside the header section, you can see example header and we are having the value also. So hope you understand that. So now we have seen a get request. So you can also specify a post request. Later on in the series, you can see, we'll be seeing post request in detail. So right now I'm not going to show you that. If you set this URL to post right now, so for simply for reference, I will show you. So we are setting this to post and we are not doing anything. So let's try refreshing the page and let's see what happens. So let's try refreshing this page. So earlier it was on get request. Now it is on post request. So let's refresh the page. See, now we are getting an error. So let's close this and let me show that properly. Okay. See, we are getting an error. The get method is not supported for this route because we haven't specified the get method for this. We have specified post method. So this post method, we are using it for forms and uh, inserting some values, etc. We'll get on to that later on. So hope you understand. So if you want to see a URL, you have to specify it in get request. So hope you understand that. So let's go back to our IDE. So now we have seen get and post request. I will also show you one more method that is any. So let's see any. Okay. Instead of here, we can set the any here. Okay. We can set this to any. 
So that means you can submit any kind of a request here. That means you can submit a post request or a get request. Every request will trigger this function. Okay. So whatever method that you are going to call to this URL, you will trigger this function. Okay. Hope you understand that. So if you try to refresh this page, the get method will work and you can see the response also. So if you refresh this page, you can see we are getting that high back. See, that's all very simple. Now we can go to the documentation and let's scroll down. And there are a lot of things that you can refer here. We'll not be going to each and everything because that will take a lot of time. So you can see CSR of protection and that is when we are using post. We will get to that later on. Okay. So let's go to redirect routes. And this is if you want to redirect from one route to another. So this is very simple. You can simply call this method redirect and then specify the route from which you wish to redirect. And the second one is to to which you want to redirect. Okay, that's it. So let's copy this and try running that. So we can paste that route here and we can change this one to something like R1. That means route one. And uh, let's th set this to R2. So now we are going to redirect R1 to R2. So if you try to access this one, it will be automatically redirected to R2. Okay. So let's try that. So one more thing that you have to see is that we are not having a slash R2 route here. We haven't defined a route here. So let's try that running that. And later on, I will show you. We'll get an error here. Okay. So let's try running it. So let's change this login to R1 slash R1 and hit enter. See, now we are having 404 error. That means you can see that we are redirected to R2. That means that we are not having this R2 specified. So let's go to the routes and specify that. Cut data. So let's create a route. Route. get let's specify slash r2 let's give a comma okay function and we can return r2 so now when we are redirected we can see r2 so let's try accessing r1 so you can change the URL to R1 and hit enter. You can see we are inside R2 now. The URL redirected to R2. Hope you understand that. So let's go to the next part. So you can see we can also set the status on redirecting. So we are having basically two one that is permanent and temporary redirect. So you can refer that on internet and learn more about that. So basically we are having two type of redirects. That's all. So you can set the status here. Okay. And then after that, you can see we are having view routes. So that is we are passing view. So we actually saw that before. I'll show you. We are also having one more function that is we can directly call the view like this. Okay. Instead of calling a callback function inside that we are returning the view, we can directly call this view function like this. So that is simple, very simple. You can actually call it like this. Okay. So let's copy it from here and we can paste it on the bottom okay so we are having a new route that is welcome and we are calling the same view that is welcome okay so if you try to access simply slash that is the home page and also slash welcome we'll be loading the same view that is welcome.play.php so this is the name of the file so if you are changing this file name to maybe like home.play.php you have to specify home here okay Hope you understand that this is the name of the file and let's try accessing this so let's change this r2 to welcome slash welcome and hit enter see now we are loading the same view if you try to remove this welcome and hit enter you can see we are loading the same view see we are having the same view part for both the routes hope you understand that now the next one is we can also pass 
an array so this part we'll be seeing it in detail so you can also pass a value like this so i'll show you quickly so here let's keep a comma and we can pass this maybe uh, okay let's keep it to the same and let's go to welcome and we are going to change everything and now we can access name like dollar name so in order to print a php variable you have to use curly braces like this double curly braces okay inside that you can call dollar name we are passing this name variable from this route to this view okay hope you understand that we are passing this name that is an array you, you can actually call this name like this okay dollar name like we normally call a php variable you can call that like this okay so let's try refreshing it now if you come here and refresh the page you can see the name that we passed see that's it so hope you understand that part now we can scroll down and this is a command which you can use to list all the route so this is i will show you by running this command to run this you can open the terminal and uh, okay let's open one more and here we can paste it see now you can see all the routes that we are having so these are the default routes that laravel is ha having when you are creating a project so you can see we are having slash and this is the one you can see here on the top let's minimize this here and see this is the route and that is this one okay and uh, we have specified login r1 r2 and welcome see that's all and let's go to the next part you can actually read this and understand more about that so let's go to the next part and we are here okay parameters passing parameters like id and all so you can actually pass a variable through the url like this so you simply have to use a curly braces and you can actually get the value that you pass here here okay inside this callback function you can get the value inside this variable dollar id i will show you so let's create a route so let's go to our login and we can give a slash and let's call something like user okay so we are actually passing a user id let's say user id okay and we can return user id itself so dollar user id we can get this user id here okay so you can dollar user id see so when a user types this url he have to specify this slash after that you can specify the id of the user or something so it is useful when you are trying to fetch the details of a user let's say if you are creating an admin dashboard and you have to delete a user okay so you can create a route like delete slash user id and you have to add proper authentication for this route we will get to this on later part of this video series so you can subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when we post a new video so let's try loading this url right now so our route is slash delete and then we have to pass the id so let's copy this and go to the chrome so now we are not having slash login because we removed it okay so it is slash delete and slash you can pass the id let's say one okay and hit enter see we are having the id here and we can pass two and three see that is it so you can pass any value here so if you try to pass something like this that will also work so in order to prevent that you can also set constraints so if you scroll down here you can see you can actually set constraints like for see now if you want to get only numbers you can set this this is a regular expression that you can set to a route and you can set some constraints so let's copy this now this will only take numbers so this one okay so let's copy that and we can paste that here so we are actually calling this ver function 
and then we have to specify the user id instead of id we are using user id here okay so add that and then now we are specifying it numbers okay now let's go back to the chrome and try refreshing so here we are passing alphabets so if you try to refresh it will show 404 see when i refresh the page it is showing page not found if you try to pass numbers let's pass one it will work properly see so like this you can set many constraints you can set things like this set it to alphabet etc so you can refer the documentation for that in detail you can learn more about that in here okay so the next topic that we will be seeing is named routes that is we are going to name each route so that it will be convenient for us to call each route okay so you can name a route like this name and give the name that you like to set it so let's go to our ide so now we can name each route so let's name this route like home so we have to call the method name and now we can set the name home so if you're trying to access this route you can call it like let's say inside here we are trying to print the route right now because we are inside the print curly braces so this is just for printing okay so we are going to print the route so you can call route here route there's a method route and inside that you can pass the name so home okay so you can see we have specified the route name home here if you don't specify the route name here and try to access it here it will show error okay and don't get confused by this like we are passing this ur uh, uri here and don't get confused by the route name and uh, uri it is totally different you have to specify the name here in order to access it like this okay now if you try to refresh the page you will get the route there so let's go to the home page see now we are having the url we can also try loading slash welcome slash welcome since we are actually passing the same view see you can see we are getting the route to the home page here we are printing the route to the home page and we are getting the route to the home page here and we are inside slash welcome so hope you understand that now if you scroll down the documentation you can see more points that you can refer and here you can see we are generating the url so you can get the url of that route using the name like this okay route then give the name that you specified and you will get the url inside the variable like this and if you wish to redirect to that route you can call this function redirect and then specify the route like this so these are some helper functions that laravel have you can use those okay and these are the naming so you can scroll down further you can refer these and learn more so these are actually helpful you can learn more about this and later on this video series we'll be seeing all this in detail so let's see route groups right now so we can group routes so let's go to our ide and let's open web.php and we can try creating a route group here so route then we can specify something like so we will be creating this group to achieve something like let's say we have created a login and we have to specify some routes that is only accessible by people who have logged in so let's specify a middleware and inside the middleware we can specify auth so this is a middleware that laravel already has and this will check if the user has already logged in and after that we can call the method group and inside that we can pass the function and open it like this and close it using the semicolon here and now this is a route group and this is having a middleware you can also specify something like prefix so let's say we have to give some prefix so let's say user and you can use this arrow here so now every route that will be specifying inside this route group 
will be having a prefix user so let's say we are going to copy this route welcome so let's cut it from here and we can paste that here and we have to remove this middleware because we haven't implemented login right now or you can change this auth to gust g u e s t okay that will work now we can try running this so we have to use the prefix also so if you try to access it by slash welcome it will not work you have to specify slash user slash welcome okay so right now we are inside the welcome and uh, we haven't refreshed this page so if you try to refresh this page you can see page not found because we removed that so we have to type come here and type user slash and then give welcome hit enter and you can see it is working so hope you understand that so we'll be using route groups when we want to route few groups depending upon the situation maybe you have to set a prefix or maybe set a middleware something like that so we'll be seeing those in detail on later on videos we'll be creating some projects and learning all this so let's scroll down and middleware will be checking this in detail on later on videos controllers so uh, this also will be checking on coming videos we can scroll down further and uh, here you can see route prefixes that's what we saw right now we simply added a prefix and you can see you can group it and inside whatever route com which comes inside that group will be having this prefix so that's this one and uh, yeah we can also add prefix to the names also so for that you simply have to use this you can simply create a prefix like this name admin dot so this is for maybe like admins admin dashboard and all so you can simply give a prefix for the name so hope you remember that we gave name to the route like this okay so right now this route is having a name that is users okay so we are also having a prefix for the name that is admin dot so now when we are trying to call this route you have to call it like admin dot it is having a dot here so you have to use it like admin dot users okay so hope you understand that so the last thing that we are going to check right now is route caching so you can actually cache each route using this command php artisan route cache and you can also clear the route like route colon clear that's it so this is useful when you are trying to develop an app and you are having some route cache and you are not able to load the route etc you can try clearing the cache so these are useful commands that will be very handy when you are developing an application so you can go through this you can try running this command and all now we can also see one more thing that is a request class so let's create a route so here we can see that we have created a route search and it is a get method so let's say we want to receive a value something like q equal to so let's say we are going to search okay search on a website and we are going to search php okay so let's say php yeah so you are going to pass q equal to php okay so you want to receive this php value here inside this function so for that you can use a class named request so when you choose the request class from the list you can see that we are getting a lot of list named request so we have to choose illuminate slash http this one okay so don't choose anything else so choose this one and you can see it is added here so in php storm you can click here on the gray and type alt plus enter and you can click this one okay and it will add to the top so if you're using vs code uh, the shortcut will be different you can simply add the import statement here like this so you have to make sure that it is from illuminate slash 
http slash request if you change this it will show errors okay so this is a very important part okay and now we can create a variable dollar request so now we are having a variable dollar request of the type request okay so let's try dd dollar request so now we can see whatever things that this variable is having so you can remove this from here okay we'll be passing it from our browser okay now we can try running this so here we can type slash search and hit enter so let's zoom out a little bit okay so here we can see that we are getting a lot of values things see our method that is get you can also see that we are having headers etc so let's see that how we can pass our value that is q so let's give it a question mark q equal to php and hit enter now here we can see that we are having that value added here on the request uri and you can also see that here inside the query you can see parameters q equal to php okay so hope you understand that so now we can see how we can select this q from this so for that go to the editor and here we can give an arrow and call q okay if you are going to pass q as your key name then you can use q okay or if you are going to pass something like user id so let's say you are going to pass user id then you have to pass it like this okay so you have to make sure that the key name is proper so right now we are going to pass q okay q now it will only show the value that we are passing inside q okay let's refresh the page and now you can see php see we are passing q equal to php and it is only showing php now if you don't pass anything it will show null see because we are not passing the value q if you are passing something else other than q let's say name if you are passing name here it will also show null because we are not passing q here only if you are passing q it will show q if you are passing name you have to change the key name on the code i will show you that also so you simply have to change this q to name and you can run and see it is also working refresh the page see that's it very simple so hope you understand how you can reuse a request class so we'll be also using this inside post and also get method so the way of reading the values are exactly same but when we are passing it we, it will be different we'll be passing it from a form or something else when we are using a post method so right now we are using get that's why you are passing it like this on later on in this video series we'll be discussing the post method and all other methods in detail so stay subscribed and follow so now we can also check the api.php file so this we will be using when we are creating some apis for our application or something so here we are having a specialty that is every route that we are going to specify here will be having a prefix that is slash api so let's say we are let's remove this from here okay and we can create a route here route let's create a get route itself and here we can specify something like route one and we can create a callback function and return route one okay so now we are having a route and it is a get method route one so let's try loading this so now we can try loading it so you can see you can try accessing it directly by giving slash route one now you can see it is showing page not found so we have to give a prefix that is slash api now you can see it is working so this is used for creating apis so we'll be getting to this in detail so basically we will be creating android applications apis for the applications 
maybe you are using react or something so you'll be using this apis for creating such applications i'll walk you through all those in detail on later on videos everything else is similar you are having get post all those method everything is similar and you can also work with and change all this prefix and all so right now by default you are having this so that's all with this video hope you understand about routes in laravel in the coming videos we'll be seeing about views and controllers models migrations etc so stay tuned and subscribe to this channel if you like this video give it a thumbs up and stay subscribed for more such videos